Hi and welcome to today's video. It's going to be a little bit different today. I want to share with you guys the entire design process for 3D design and 3D printing. I mean, by no means is this going to be an in-depth look. It's just going to be kind of how we get from something on the screen to something in your hand. Now, what I've got today is I've got a problem. The Prusa, when I built it, makes a noise when it's going up and down the, the Z-axis. Um, I've got some footage of it and I'll also play the audio from the footage in the background so you can hear the noise. Now, it's not a nice noise and it only happens when it's doing like a, a big travel. When it's doing just layer prints, it doesn't happen. But this is the problem I've got. I'm going to be quiet for a sec so you can hear it. There, it's, it's, it's not good. It's really annoying. So as you could see, I'll just play that footage again, but zoom into the top. The top of the threaded rods are moving quite a lot. They, they seem to be a little bit bent. Now, I don't want to take the entire printer apart to straighten them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fashion a piece that fits on the top. So where we start is we start by gathering information. Now, the information we need is just in the form of dimensions of what we want and the space we've got to work with. So these next two pictures are going to show the, the area of the prusor that I want to work with and the dimensions that I measured. I just used kind of like a caliper or a ruler or something just to take these dimensions. They're pretty rough. You know, I just need to know what I'm dealing with. So as you can see, you, you need to gather some information first. Now, my CAD tool is SolidWorks. Now, the reason I use SolidWorks is because we use it at work. And, you know, I've got years and years of experience with it. Don't get me wrong, I've got years and years of experience with Inventor and Pro Engineer. You know, I've used Blender, I've used 3D Studio Max. The only reason I'm using SolidWorks today is because I can remote into work and use the license. And, you know, it, it's all legit. It, <laughs> please don't think I've ripped off this software because I haven't. I'm just remoting in from home. So we're going to use SolidWorks. And um, we'll just switch to that now and we'll get started. So today we're going to use SolidWorks to model our part. Now, SolidWorks is a structured modeler. I'll get into a little bit of detail on that in a minute. I don't want to kind of baffle you with science. I just want to show the design process. So we're going to jump in. We're going to hit New. We're going to hit Part. And we're going to hit OK. So once we've done that, we get presented with a blank screen. OK, it's blank. Now, down the left-hand side is your model tree. Now, this is what builds the structure of the part. And this ribbon bar here is all of your commands and as you can see we have extrude revolve and everything else seems to be grayed out at the minute because we've got a blank screen so what i'm going to do is our blank screen isn't actually empty because we do have an origin treat that like the center of the universe that is the middle of your part or the middle of space or whatever and we have a right plane a top plane and a front plane now these are pieces of paper and you have to draw on pieces of paper so what we do is we create a sketch on a piece of paper. Now I'm going to draw on the front plane and it'll turn it around so that we can see it. And then we've got this little kind of like origin point in the side. So taking our dimensions, I'm going to create a circle and then I'm going to create a bigger circle around the outside of it. Now, if I ever kind of like a menu pops up on the screen like this, it's the shortcut menu and I've just pressed S. That's the only key I ever press. So we need to put some dimensions on. So I'm going to dimension the inner circle. Now, as we know, our rod is 5 millimeters in diameter, so I'm going to make it 6.5 millimeters. Now, when you're working in units, you can type in mm or you can type in in for inches. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. I just type in mm. So there's our 6.5, and I would like to make the thickness of this 2 millimeters. So that's our starting point. And I think if we press this button here, that will quit the uh, the sketch. And then if we hold down the middle mouse, we can spin it around. And as you can see, we, we have two flat circles. So now we need to make it thick. So we go to Features, and then we go to Extrude. Now I'm going to make this uh, probably 18 high. Now over here, we can type in 18 millimeters, and that will make it high. We press the green tick on the right-hand side. And there we go. Now we use the wheel to zoom out and press the wheel to rotate. Now, if you hold down shift and press the wheel, you can zoom and you hold down control and press the wheel, you can pan. But we're not really interested in that at the minute. So we've got a tube 18 millimeters high. Now, 
that's not going to work for us because we need to cap the end off. So if I click on this face and say sketch, it's now drawing on this end. And I can say circle from this point out here. Now, when that goes orange, it means it's locked to that point. So it doesn't actually need any dimensions or anything. It's just fine. I'm going to dimension it just because I want to, 10.5. And now it goes black. There we go. So we exit that sketch and then we say extrude and we want to go the other way. So we drag this arrow the other way and we want to go two millimeters. Okay. Right. So now we've got a tube which is capped on the end, which is pretty good. That, that's, that's pretty good. The, the five millimeter threaded rod is going to sit inside there and the top piece is going to stop it from going any further. So that's going to hold the five millimeter rod. So now we need somewhere, some way to clip it to the eight millimeter smooth rod. And that's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to draw on this, this face. So I'll click this face and say sketch. And then if I press space and hit this, which says normal to what it does is it brings it round so that I'm looking at that edge zoom it out a little because I don't want to be staring at it and I want um, I want another circle and now if I just hover over this you see this orange point has appeared now if I move off to the left it's going to keep that straight so I can click there and create another circle now what I can also do is I can hit that circle hold down control and hit that circle and then I can say equal now I don't have to put any dimensions in and you can see here we have now two points that say equal. Now if this circle changes size, this circle is going to change size because they're equal. Which is absolutely fine. It's exactly what I want them to be. So now I want another circle inside this circle because this is where the smooth rod is going to sit. And I'm going to press S. I'm going to do dimension. And we want this to be, it wants to fit on an 8mm smooth rod. Now the, uh, the process of 3d printing will make the hole a little bit smaller so if i choose 8.5 millimeters for the hole that's going to make the hole about eight millimeters when it's finished printing because of extrusion anyway and we need a distance from this circle to this circle now you remember in the picture earlier we had the distance from the outside to the outside now if you hold down shift before you click the circles it will now measure between the outsides and we all know that that was 23.5 millimeters so there we go we're nearly done so we need a line from this point here we want the diamond to come on because we want it to be at the top of the circle to that one and then we want to do another line where's line there it is from this diamond to this diamond right now we could spend time i'm going to press skip we could spend time trimming this all up and making it all look nice uh, what i am going to also do is just add a circle in there just to uh just to finish i'm going to make them equal to just to finish off and close the outside of it so now i can exit that sketch and turn it around and, that, and now it looks like we've got some some kind of boot thing going on here <coughs> excuse me right so we need to extrude this. So I want to select this part and this part to extrude. Uh, I want it to go up. Now you'll also remember in the dimensions that in the dimensional pictures that we have about 10 millimeters of space in this area. So I don't want to use it all up. So I'm going to use eight millimeters. So as you can see, I've just dragged, I've just dragged this arrow until the measurement ruler says eight, let it go, hit the tick and it builds it. There we go. So, there's only one thing left to do, really, and we need to uh, open this end. So, if we sketch on this top piece, press spacebar, hit normal 2, and what I like to do is I like to work in a triangle. So, if we hold on in there and then go to the center, I just work in a triangle here, just anywhere it does, straight up and down, wait for the straight up and down thing, and back to here. Now, if I press escape, now, if I select these two parts here with control, I can then say make perpendicular and that will make them at 90 degrees. Now, it still moves because we need some kind of dimension in there. Not a problem. We can right click this and say select midpoint and then hold down control and left click this point and say make horizontal. There you go. These have gone black. You can't move them. You can just move that line in and out. Now, 
that's not particularly something we want to do because as you can see it's going to chop this off and it's not going to leave a very big gap to get the um the smooth rod in so i'm going to click this perpendicular and i'm going to delete it but i'm going to leave this horizontal on because what that'll allow me to do that allows me to change the angle and what i particularly want to do is that that actually looks pretty good to be honest maybe maybe a bit higher i don't really want to put dimensions on this because i just want to kind of like this is the development kind of stage in fact what i'm going to do i'm going to delete that line and i'm going to add some horizontal lines some vertical line a vertical line some horizontal lines here and i'm going to make these holding down control equal length and then right click select midpoint hold down control left click horizontal right now what that'll do is that'll allow me to uh to move this around with a bit more control there that's a bit better that's a bit better there we go so i'm going to press s i'm going to put some dimensions on this uh i'm going to dimension that up with two millimeters i'm going to dimension this up at say 12 yeah 12 should do it and i'm going to drag this out so that we can now change oh we may need to change that to four no not 47 four yeah that's better so now we can drag this out we're going to really control where we're going to cut off so everything that appears here is going to get removed right so can i choose a point there i don't think i can yeah can i add a point to that i can add a point to that line uh, no i don't want to do that that's that's going to be too complicated right so what i want to do what i want to do is i want to be about a millimeter from the, the top of here Ah, right there we go there we go so we add a line from this diamond down and along okay then we press s and we dimension this line to one millimeter and then we make sure that this line is horizontal oh sketch is over defined because i've pressed too many ah there we go you see this one here it's put a midpoint on there automatically i don't want that so we'll delete that and now the sketch is no longer over defined so what i can do now i can drag this to here and then i can drag this to here see one millimeter of overlap on there is pretty huge so let's take it to 0 0.5 that looks better that looks better what i'm going to do is that connected to that circle now good right so i want this point in this line to be coincident there we go and so that everything doesn't get screwed up i'll make those two lines construction and they turn into a center line for some reason and now you can see that we've got very tight control over where this is going to be if we change this to 0 0.25 that all moves around and we get 0 0.25 so i'm going to try 0 0.5 okay quit the sketch and then i'm going to use extruded cut so i'll just spin it around so you can see and i'm going to change this from blind to through wall and press the tick and now we've got an open end so that will now clip onto the smooth rod but these sharp ends don't look too good so if we go up to fill it and if we change this to full round we go this face this face and this face i want to be a full round and if we set a uh, full preview we can see what's going to happen so we press the tick there you go it's rounded that end and we do the same again for this face you've got to keep selecting them over here that's the only annoying thing about this this face and this face and okay and that's a full round again now i think we're done with this part so what we've done is we've took our dimensions we've took our idea and we now have a 3d part now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to quickly save this uh i'm just going to call it uh, ooh, um, uh steve's support there we go and then to get this into repair to your host i'm going to save it as and i'm going to change the file type to an stl file now because the display on the printer doesn't support all these special characters i'm just going to call it uh sup with two p's and that will go into that folder i'm going to put that on a desk no no i'll put it in that folder. that's fine there yeah. yeah so we'll save that and then solidworks will say to us you have saved this file are you sure yep and 
we want all bodies. Why we want all bodies? It is one body. Well, that's fine. Okay. And now we've got our STL file, so we'll switch over to Repet Your Host. So, here's a pretty familiar screen. It's Repet Your Host. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how, which we probably all know anyway, but I would take my part that I've just created called SUP with two Ps and open it in Repet Your Host. And it's gone in the right way around. We'll just quickly flip it around to see what's going on. Now, I want two, so I'm going to press copy. And I'll say I want one copy. Yep. So there we go. I want one for each side of the printer. This dot, if just in case you don't know, is the home position. So on the Prusa, it's at the front left. And on the DaVinci, it's at the back right in this location. So it, it, in case your 3D prints are coming out the wrong way around, it's just probably because you've got this dot in, in the wrong location. So we're going to print this on the Prusa, so I'm going to put it that way. And I'm going to right click and drag my parts out just so that they're a little little bit on the front and a little bit away. I don't like to put things in the middle because kind of the heat bed gets really hot there. And I'm going to leave them there. Now we're going to go to slice. And I'm going to slice with slicer. Um, I'm going to print them with two millimeters of brim. These are the settings that I already have configured for the Prusa, uh, the DaVinci with the E3 DV6, uh, the DaVinci with the stock extruder. And these are all the materials I already have. So I'm going to use Prusa i3. I'm going to use Prusa ABS and I'm going to use two millimeters of brim just so that it because because they're pretty small parts I want to kind of give them a good chance to stick to the bed and we hit slice with slicer and then we wait this is an i7 machine with 16 gig of ram so it shouldn't take very long at all to slice these parts and it hasn't took very long at all to slice these parts and we're getting a little bit of information up here 26 minutes well 27 minutes to uh, to print it out and it's going to use about one and a half meters of filament which is uh that's pretty good that's not very expensive at all so that's it uh, the last thing we need to do because we're running off the memory card is we need to press save print and we need to press save print and i'm going to keep it in there and i'm going to call it the same name i'm going to call it su double p but it's going to have um I'm going to delete the STL at the end. Okay, get rid of that. It's going to have .gco for G code at the end. And we press save. And then all we need to do is transfer that to the to the, uh, to the the memory card, put it in the printer, and hit print. So we'll do that next, and then we'll have some time-lapse of it printing out. Okay, guys, so I have to apologize for this uh, time-lapse footage. The Prusa is definitely not the best printer to take time-lapse footage of because as you can see, the Y-axis is formed by the bed moves backwards and forwards and because the time-lapse footage is delayed, it just looks like it's shaking itself apart. It's absolutely rubbish footage. I don't think I'll be doing time-lapse footage of the Prusa again unless it's like a mammoth huge build but maybe it's just the fact that this part is so small, it just looks absolutely horrible. So I apologize again, guys. Sorry about that. It's nearly over. Please hang in there. So there you go. That's the part printed out. I've removed them from the printer and just used a little emery board thing to uh, remove the brim. Just broke it off and removed it. And, and this is one of them here. There you go. So it's uh, it's looking really nice. The uh, The full round that we put in on the front is really nice. The hole that we put in is has turned out really nice. You know, the top of it's really nice. So we'll get it fit to the Prusa and uh, we'll see if it solved our problem. So to fit this part, just line the hole up with the threaded rod, turn it round and clip it onto the smooth rod. There you go, it's as simple as that. So there you go. We've gone from problem through design phase, through printing to fitting and we've solved our problem. I really hope this video has helped kind of like show and give you a bit of understanding of the design process from, you know, from your own mind and your own problem to getting something that's going to fix it. You can create anything you want with these printers and, and with this software, you know, you just want to kind of go for it. There are free softwares out there. There's SketchUp and, and Tinkercad and things like that out there, which you can use for free. Um, there's also Blender, which is not structured modeling like this but it's different um it's kind of like real-time rendering but you can use that too that's also free i might get round to doing a video on blender later on because it is quite a difficult tool to use but i really hope this has been an enjoyable thing for you to watch i hope it's been informative and as usual please like comment and subscribe i've been steve thanks for listening